Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to use crosshatching to shade areas, for example, under a graph to represent an integral. Now, you can just select a colour, let's say this grey here, and use the bucket tool. If I click the bucket tool, and then here, and it shades. Sometimes you might get a, uh, a border there because of the last border setting you had. Mine was clear, so it didn't matter, but I'll, I'll put on a border by shift clicking the red. If that happens to you, just uh, shift click this cross here actually, uh, with the region selected, uh, already was selected, and it'll get rid of it. Now, if you zoom in here, you can see that uh, that fills pretty well. Although sometimes if I really zoom in, you can see that uh, the bucket tool is not precise. If you want to get rid of that, what you can do is you can click the region, D for dropper, which samples that colour grey, then shift click it and it expands the fill. You can see it's gone too far there, but I can get around that by clicking the select tool and then sending the uh, shade into the back there and that's more uh, shaded in. Uh, so that's one way you can shade an integral. I'll click on that and delete it because often um, uh, that's too much and people prefer cross hatching. Now there are different uh, ways you can cross hatch. You can use the pattern fill tool. If I click on the um, again the, the bucket tool and fill that, there comes my shading again as I had before. But under fill and stroke, if I click on the fill and then the pattern shading there, it's supplied the stripes one to one as you can see there. There are different ones you can try here. White is all white stripes which only show up on a black background so just stripes one to one or one to two whatever you want. I'll go back to one to one and I'll shift click this cross to get rid of the border. That's a bit, uh, doesn't look quite right. If I select it and then hit N for the node tool I'll zoom out you can see up in the corner, and it can be different places in the document, there are these three symbols. A cross, a circle and a square. If I again zoom in and move this square, you can see it um, changes the shading. I'll move to the left there and it changes the left spacing. So there might be something like that that I prefer. Uh, the circle change the rotation so I can rotate that there. So that may be one way, I'll click the select tool, of getting cross hatching. Of course that cross hatching might be too uh, thick for you so we can try another one. I'll control Z back to the grey, change the pattern fill and this time try a say 1 to 3 and N for node tool zoom out and find these symbols and move this left again and that might be more to your liking dragging the rectangle to the left and I can use the circle to rotate and click away and that might be more appropriate I'll get rid of that grey border by selecting it and then shift clicking across here and that's gone so that's another way of getting a shading on an integral I'll delete that, sorry, I'll uh, control Z to go back to the to the grey on that. Now, the pattern fill with those uh, stripes wasn't really editable as far as colour goes. And you might want to play around with that. So here's another way. If I select the Bezier Pen tool, and I'll click and hold down control to constrain horizontal, click again and enter. And while that's selected, I'll change the stroke style to a bit thicker, let's make it say 0.4 and I'm going to control D 19 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 so I've got 20 lines on top of each other if I drag the last one, control drag down to about there then select them all align and distribute and distribute them equally vertically I've got some shading there now if I select all that shading, go path, stroke to path, so they're now not strokes, they're actually shapes, lots of skinny rectangles, and now path union to make it all one object. I'm going to take this grey area, drag it over, actually before I'll leave it up here, I'm just going to rotate this around, I can use the right bracket or the left square bracket 
to rotate that around for a cross hatching in the 45 degree direction. Now I'm going to drag that grey shading over here on top. Well, actually, it probably is underneath, so I'll, I'll raise it to the top. I don't think this matters actually. I'll raise it to the top anyway. Yeah, you can see it's in the top there. Um, now, if I select both and go path intersection, you can see I've got that shading and I can come back and drop that in there so I can zoom in and get a more accurate shading there. If it's not accurate enough, you can use the arrow keys to get more precise control there. That looks a bit better. In fact, that looks pretty good. Uh, if it doesn't quite fill, to you, you can see on the left here, gaps, you can actually increase by dragging uh, control sh uh, shift and drags it from the center and expand those to fill in the gaps. Now that's the same result as we had before. The difference is now if I just click, because it's an object, click the color, say red, I can change the color of the shading more easily. So uh, that's something that some people wanted to do. Anyway, there are a few ways of generating cross hatching. Might seem a bit complicated, but um, once you've practiced it a few times, that uh, you realize it gives you uh, full control using uh, Inkscape rather than, say, a graphing program. Once again, thanks for watching.